Hey, welcome back to the Mool Littoral. I think we're heading off to meet a thought form. Uh, please remember this game is about anxiety, so exercise self-care. The first two weeks of travel were rather uneventful. Glasswalker spoke endlessly of all of his achievements and passions in an attempt to improve my mood. All it really accomplished in doing was making me realise that I've been wasting my life at that damn beach and I can never reclaim those years. I could have made something of myself, like Glasswalker. Instead, I'm just a burden for yet another person. And that's an example of negative intrusive thoughts that you shouldn't have because they're not true. Eventually, Glasswalker led us into the deep snow-touched woods of Canade, where he became enamoured with some animal tracks. We followed them for what felt like hours. That's another pretty background. The art style's nice. I really like hand-drawn stuff. It, I don't know, and I think for something that's about anxiety, it really adds to it, that personable touch. Jewel, I have something special to show you. I think you'll enjoy this. Can you see that little creature over there? The one in the cave under the hill. Wow, what is that thing? This is one of the creatures that I study in research. A remnant of a dream. They are like the animal equivalent of thought forms. Creatures made from intrusive thoughts and wandering daydreams. There are many species of them, but this variety is specific to this region. I've never seen anything like it. You should look at it through the lens I gave you. That little trinket can help you learn a lot about the world. Challenge number one, the chlorophyll of Canade. Okay, let's look at it. This small creature is called a chlorophyll. They are creatures born from the remnants of daydreams one has during relaxing sunny days. Young chlorophyll like this one are skittish and meek. If startled, they will wail loudly in order to alert older chlorophyll in the area that they are in danger. You definitely should not have walked this close to it. Is there anything else to click on while we're down here? The large fresh footsteps are of an older chlorophyll. Elder chlorophyll, like the ones that made these footprints, are fiercely protective of their young. When they see that their kin is in danger, they act quickly to deter the attacker by releasing intense heat stored in the heat sack within their bosom. This branch strains with the weight of the snow that rests upon it. A gentle nudge would be enough for the massive snow to fall and cover the small creature below. You feel that just focusing enough on it could make the snow fall, but only pilgrims like Glasswalker have that sort of power, the power to edit reality simply through focus. You are nothing. Surely you cannot do the same. I think we'll find that we can do the same. Oh, it's cute and terrible. And now it's mom's here and it's scary. <laughs> and I didn't act quick enough because I was too busy being like, wow, look at how pretty it is. The heat of the creature's breath burns your flesh and nearly melts the metal of your goggles onto your face. Attempt a better fate. It's going to cry and we're going to do that. Oh no, the creature, not seeing its child, assumes you took it. The heat of the creature's breath burns your flesh and nearly melts the metal of your goggles onto your face. Trying again. <laughs> okay, we're going to let it cool, let mum turn up and then cover it. It got distracted. As the creature tends to its child in danger, Glasswalker puts a hand on your shoulder and suggests that you both leave while the creature is preoccupied. Continue on your journey. Well, that could have been disastrous. I should have realised that Remnant's caregiver wouldn't be too far away. Hey, thanks. Hmm? For showing me the creatures. I can't imagine that's an experience that very many people have. Shame we got chased off. Oh, you are quite welcome. Perhaps I could tell you more about my studies. And then there was a loud, gut-wrenching scream. Not of any human, but of a large, terrified beast. A desperate, fearful howl. That sounded close. Was that the remnant? It could be, but I hope not. I truly hope not. For a good cause. Yes, for a good cause. What is the meaning of this? Ah, good day. Isn't it obvious? I am hunting the remnants. You're in a glowy suit and obviously evil. I like their little lantern that they've got on their hat. It is a forbidden act. It's been taboo to hunt remnants for generations. Times change. The remnants are overpopulating and have begun to attack the cities. I decided to do something about it. It seems that no one else has the gumption to cull their numbers. And who are you to make that decision? I am Liark of the Grand Librarium. Well, there's an infamous name. Jewel, this man was exiled from my orders. His violent disposition was not tolerated there. So, Liark, 
The thought form of kindness pitied you and made you a librarian, scholar. Tell me, is he aware of what you are doing right now? Of course not. He is on holiday. The kindness thought form is narrow minded. He would never allow this side aside to go and do what is right. Now if you will stop stroking your righteousness, I must get on with my business finding the younger remnant. I swear I heard its call earlier. Haven't you done enough? Why would you need to find the young one? Because no child deserves to be away from its mother. You're nothing but a depraved murderer! Jewel, no! Stay back! Challenge to your expat Liark. Liark is the only person to have ever been exiled from the Greylink Pilgrim Hikers. Though the reason is a closely guarded secret. He is incredibly intelligent and a talented engineer, but his apathy gives way to a crueler nature. Even now, he holds a curved knife behind his back. His knowledge of the revelation arts allows him to channel electrical energy through any number of tools at his disposal. Before you is the gourd corpse of the maternal chlorophyll that you encountered not minutes ago. The arts twisted blade is embedded in its hide. The edge of the blade is barely scraping against the chlorophyll's heat storing organ. Just focusing on the corpse would cause the organ to rupture, expelling a stream of intense heat from the wound. Icicles, hanging tapering pieces of ice caused by the dripping of water at low temperatures. They have been loosened by the murderous kerfuffle between the expat, the arc, and the chlorophyll. A pulse of electric discharge painfully shoots through your entire body, rendering your muscles stiff and unresponsive. Glasswalk prefers to be hit with the same blast of electricity as you both stand paralysed. Expat Lee out chuckles and calmly escapes. Hey, I did it! I made sure the biggest icicle shattered on his stupid helmet. The rest fell harmlessly around him. Better to emotionally scar him than physically scar him. The former leaves more of an impression than the latter. This I know from experience. Liark lay motionless in the snow for a beat, then clumsily scrambled away. That's right, psychopath. Run away. If I see that stupid helmet again, then that ice cold's going straight up your ass. You hear me? <laughs> That's a threat. Jewel. Every time I start to find enjoyment in anything, it's taken from me. Why does everything I love have to be destroyed? Am I that bad of a person? Jewel, you were able to save the young remnant, right? If you hadn't covered it in snow, Liark would have found it. That's something, right? Something to be happy about. How do you even know that I saved it? I mean, I wanted it to happen, and it just happened, just like with the icicles and Liark. It's the empathy arts. They are used by pilgrims like me. When you understand the world enough, you can learn to edit it in slight ways, like you have been doing today. I had a suspicion that you had the talent for it, and this seems to confirm it. You are a natural. So even with magic pilgrim powers or whatever, I still wasn't able to save both of the remnants. It's not surprising really. I fail everyone. You'll get used to it. Jewel, we all fail, even at the things we are passionate about. Even me. I wear this cloak because I lost my arm to a dangerous remnant that I thought I knew enough about to be safe from. But I learned from my failure. We all learn from our failures. Don't be discouraged by the events you can't control. I'm sorry, you're just trying to help. I get it. I appreciate the effort, really. Let's just keep moving. Glasswalker and I didn't talk to each other for a bit. I couldn't tell if he was trying to think of something to say or if he just gave up trying to console me. Probably a little bit of both. Eventually, we arrived at a train platform just outside of the forest and we waited and waited. I've been wondering something, Jewel. Hmm? Where did you get those goggles? Fair question, they're super cool. The ones I'm wearing? I made them. You find a lot of junk on the beach and I needed something to protect my eyes from the sun. That's really impressive. They resemble the sight goggles young pilgrims from Greylick use. So I was curious, what about the antenna? What's that for? I built an old radio into the goggles. The music helps me sleep. Well, you certainly know a heck of a lot more than I do about radios. Ugh. And waited. Have you ever ridden on a train, Jewel? Never had the chance to. This train we will be riding on was designed by an artisan from Varish. Very lavish. Very fashionable. How does that sound? I guess I'm a bit excited, yeah? How about a boat? You live by the ocean, so I would think that... I think I see the train. Finally, we were able to board the train, mercifully ending Glasswalker's awkward small talk. 
The train was warm and filled with rich colours, a stark contrast to the barren white wilderness of Canaid. To my relief, Glasswalker and I sat in the back, away from the other passengers. A few hours passed, Glasswalker had fallen asleep sitting up next to me. Unfortunately, insomnia had its hold on me yet again. You have insomnia, you have anxiety. You must sleep. Before stopping time, you can click on the passengers' newspapers to view them. Bad stories lead to unstoppable thoughts. Unstable worries lead to lack of sleep. Find the good in the world so that you may sleep. This is an interesting way to look at sort of mindfulness, I guess, before you go to bed. Oh, hang on. Come back. The Sir Bridge maintenance news completion at last. That sounds like a good thing. I find with my anxiety, like the bit before bed and like in your sleep when it's sort of quiet and you're alone, that's when time and my thoughts get away from me. It's sort of like this game is saying it can get caught up and on this negative pathway, I guess. That's a time when you're kind of vulnerable, I guess. And if it gets on that endless pathway of negativity, it can go really badly. I like that this game is making your character have to look for positive things to think about before going to bed. I think that makes a really big difference if you do it yourself. If you go through your day and think about good things, even if they're small, like, hey, I got up and made myself breakfast today. Like, that's, that's an achievement. If you're struggling through anxiety or depression or something like that, small steps are a big deal. So reward yourself for them and think about them. I slept pretty well for a while after that. Something about Glasswalker's presence helped. He felt like the first real friend I'd had in years, as obnoxious as he could be at times. He roused me from my sleep as we arrived at our destination, the northernmost city of Tambor, in the province of Norsfield. Ah, get a whiff of that crisp Norsfield air. Oh, the music for this is nice. I like natural sounds in music, they always make me happy. <laughs> it's so damn cold it hurts to breathe through my nose. <laughs> Uh, yes, I suppose. Well, it won't be that way for long. The home of the thought form of fondness is one of the most warm and inviting places on all of Erie. The tavern at the top of the world and home of rice salt, the thought of fondness. Uh, a tavern? Yes, with rooms on the second floor. I'm going to go in the head and book each of us a room. In the meantime, you can mingle with Rye. I'm sure she'll be excited to meet you. Glasswalk awake but he had already disappeared through the door. I scrambled after him, but once inside the tavern, he was nowhere to be seen. I found myself alone, surrounded by strangers in a strange place. Challenge four, divert their attention. This would set off my social anxiety so bad. I guess maybe that's what this is about. This unassuming looking gentleman is a thought form in disguise. He is a thought form of kindness to be precise. Thought forms like to go on holiday to Rise Tavern to unwind, as they generally don't have much free time due to all their admirers and worshippers. As such, they generally use a magical disguise when they arrive in the tavern, so that people don't disturb their vacation. <laughs> a bottle of Intex Lavender Honey Cola. A direct import from the city of Raw. It doesn't appear the seal on the clerk has been broken, so it's safe to assume that the bottle is full. Today's drink of the day announces the chalkboard. In in hex lavender honey cola, a warm fizzy drink for those long cold nights here in Nosfield. In a smaller chalk scribbles underneath, there is a warning. Due to the volatile nature of this drink, please do not shake the bottle when it is sealed. It would create a fantastically sticky mess that no one wants to deal with. Here is a small portable lantern. Focusing on it will turn it on, but since the room is so bright right now, it wouldn't make much of an impression. You're like, maybe we'll shake the glass? Fulfill their expectations and as an embarrassment, an annoying stupid brat with a damaged brain. Why did you even come here? You know how this will end. You know how this will end. You know how this will end. Why didn't you stay at the beach, Jewel? That is anxiety to a T. This represents it so well. This is great. Be careful if you have anxiety, I guess. Um, I do. I'm just managing it really well these days, so I'm quite okay with this. But boy, does that really remind me of things. Okay. I think I did it. Did we get past everyone? We gotta keep distracting him. <laughs> no! 
Help! Need something to do? I don't know what to do beyond that. Ah! Thought form of kindness, help me! Don't talk to me, anyone. What else is there to click on? No! I think the thought form can help me. Come on, Mr. Kindness. No, 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 they saw me. Oh, I got them. After distracting the tavern patrons, I slipped outside, mercifully unnoticed. I couldn't do it. There was no way I could stay in there. I curled up next to the tavern and tried to make myself feel small in a desperate attempt to disappear. Sadly, it's hard to pretend you don't exist when the constant bitter cold reminds you that you unfortunately still have a body. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. And then the cold was suddenly gone. A blanket covered in glowing runes was gently wrapped around me. I looked up, and there standing in the snow next to me was the thought form of fondness. Hey there, kiddo. Doesn't seem like you're having a fun time. I'm sorry, your tavern is nice, I'm just... It's okay. What other people find comfortable may not be what you find comfortable. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm sorry. Ain't nothing to worry about. I saw Mr. Glasswalker in there. You with him? Yeah, I am. I'll let him know you're out here. When I come back out, I'll bring you some nice hot chocolate. That should perk you right up. Thank you, Miss Rye. I see why a lot of people come here. You've got a genuine kindness about you. You went out of your way to make sure I was okay. Thank you. Sorry I'm such an inconvenience. Aw, oh, thank you. You're a sweet kid. And don't worry, you're no inconvenience. Making sure everyone is having a good time at my tavern is what I live for. Now don't you go anywhere, I'll be right back out with your friend. Glasswalker. Friend. I love you. But what the hell were you thinking? I thought social interaction would be good for her. To show her that there's nothing to fear from opening up to others. Dunum. While I get you were well intentioned, what you did was try to teach her to fly by pushing her off the cliff and telling her to flap. This whole situation has been more difficult than I originally expected. I thought I was more prepared for this undertaking. Well there, big guy. You seem to be doing a good job just being a shoulder for her to lean on. All it took was mentioning your name and the last perked right up. All I'm saying is, be careful. There's a lot on the line right now. I am aware of that. Thank you, Bri. I started this journey fully aware of the potential repercussions. I took steps to protect her, as I will continue to do. Glasswalker and Raisu came out of the tavern to find me. Glasswalker apologised for expecting me to be comfortable in the tavern. He shouldn't be the one apologising. I'm the one who ruined this whole damn thing, but I didn't say that. After some much needed hot chocolate, Glasswalker suggested that we take another train to our next destination. The way this game is handling anxiety is really good. I recognise a lot of it. The stuff about the intrusive thoughts I definitely identify with. I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of the game goes. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye!